Hi, I'm AJ and thanks for taking this time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not a current subscriber, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you're going to like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Today we're going to talk about the recent Fed rate cut or the Federal Reserve change in the interest rates and how that affects the average everyday person. So last week interest rates were cut by 0.25% and basically this interest rate affects anything related to borrowing. So that includes mortgages, personal loans, credit cards, and even your savings account. Because of this rate cut, many banks have already changed their interest rates for either their credit cards, uh, their mortgages, or the savings accounts that they provide to the average user. I can already see a couple of examples from accounts that I've reviewed in the past, like SoFi Money, Betterment, Personal Capital, Ally Bank, Many of these banks that are listed in my top five savings or some of the best checking accounts out there, they have already made changes to their savings rate, but not all of them. And I'll start off talking about savings accounts because it's a little bit different than the other accounts that I talked about where you're actually borrowing money from the bank. When you have money in your savings, you're essentially letting the bank borrow money from you. So when you have money sitting in your checking or your savings account, the bank is then able to allow other people to borrow your money. So as a payment for borrowing your money, they give you an interest rate back on the funds held in your account. And that interest rate is much lower than any of the loans that they're gonna provide, whether it's via credit card, any personal loans, car loans, or a mortgage to buy a home. In fact, some banks, before the Fed even announced the rate cut, they had already changed and lowered their interest rates with the expectation that the Federal Reserve was gonna to decide to cut rates this month. But not only that, they're also anticipating that there will be another rate cut in September. So keep an eye out for that. Now to get into the meat of how it can potentially positively affect you, since with the savings rate, the interest rate for savings accounts and checking accounts will go down because of the Federal Reserve rate cut. But on the positive side is that mortgage loans, personal loans, and maybe credit cards, their interest rates will actually go down. Now, the purpose of the interest rates going down is to try to keep the economy going. What we've seen in the news is that the economy is starting to slow down. We're not quite in a recession yet, but because we've been in a 10 year bull market, the expectation is that a recession is looming very soon. And that could be this year, next year, or within the next two years is the expectation. But most comments that I've seen in the news are expecting it to happen sometime in 2020. So how are people currently taking advantage and how could you potentially take advantage of the Federal Reserve's decision to lower interest rates? The biggest thing that comes to mind are mortgage rates. So right now, because of the Fed rate cut, the cost of borrowing for a mortgage loan has actually went down. In fact, from a news article that I read on Bloomberg, mortgage rates are actually at their lowest they've been since November of 2016. So that's almost three years ago, which is 3.75%. Just about a year or two ago, it was as high as 5%. And so that means it's gone down 1.25% since that time. And while 1.25% may not sound like a lot, when you look at the hundreds of thousands of dollars that you could potentially be spending on your home, that can add up to thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, if you're up in that higher tier homes, maybe closer to a million or even above a million. That 0.25% is a huge difference in the amount of money that you're gonna spend on your home over the course of a 30 year period. In fact, it's such a big deal that people are attempting to refinance their homes so that if they did purchase it over the past year or two, when the average interest rate was over 3.75%, as high as 5%, there are some people that may have had higher than a 5% interest rate, and that's based on their current credit at the time that they took out the mortgage loan. And maybe their credit has improved over time, and now they can get a lower rate because of that improving their credit, as well as because of the lowering of the interest rates and the lowering of mortgage rates specifically over the past year or two. In fact, there are lots of people trying to refinance right now, so much so that the process of going through refinance is taking longer than it normally would. So banks aren't prepared for all of the people that are actually trying to attempt to get re refinances. And I'll put a link in the description to the specific article that I read from Bloomberg. But many of these banks don't have enough manpower to actually process all of the loans requests that they have out for refinancing. So right now, mortgage loans, if you're looking to buy a home or if you already have a home and you need a lower interest rate, right now is a great time. It is the lowest rate that you could get within the past three years. 
and with the expectation that there's going to be a lower rate potentially in September and potentially another rate cut next year. Maybe if you're looking to buy a house, if you're patient and you're willing to wait, you could get slightly lower rate than it is right now, which is currently 3.75% as the average mortgage rate. Now, another big item that's affected by this interest rate cut are credit cards. Unfortunately, credit card companies aren't actually reacting as quickly as the banks have with savings accounts and with mortgage rates. In fact, with credit cards, they're actually at a 25 year high as far as the average interest rate. And this is according to a LA Times article that I read. Now with all of these rates, you can actually find the average on a government website called FRED, F-R-E-D, and I'll put a link in the description so you can check that out. But you can check out the average credit card rates, uh, mortgage loans and car loans and things of that nature so that you can see what the average has been over time. So if you do have a lot of credit card debt right now, this interest rate may not help you very much because a 0.25% change in interest compared to an average of over 17% with some credit cards having as high as 25 or 27% interest, you know, you want to get on trying to pay down that credit card debt. That way you can improve your credit so that if you need to purchase a home or if you need to refinance, you'll have that better credit score based on the lower balances of your credit report. And of course, you'll also save on the interest that you're going to pay the bank from borrowing from them at a very high percentage. While when you have your money in a savings account, they're borrowing from you at a very low percentage rate. Now, there are some accounts out there where you can get above 2% interest on your savings account. And I've made videos, top five videos in the past, as well as best checking accounts where you can find accounts that have over 2% interest rate, which is right at where the government likes to keep inflation. So make sure you check those videos out if you're interested. And this video was really just to speak about the main interest rates that the average person would have to worry about. Again, that savings accounts where you're allowing the bank to borrow and they're paying you a small percentage for sending your cash into the bank. If you do already have a good amount of savings, of course, it's always best to invest any additional money that you can because you can get an average rate of about 8% if you're investing in a total stock market ETF or an S&P 500, maybe you can average about 10% over the course of history. And that's something you will probably never see uh, anytime soon, at least from a savings account or checking account. So investing is the way to go to make sure that your money is growing long term. So just to recap, if you are looking to buy a home, mortgage rates are at a three year low and they're expected to go down a little bit more either next month if the Fed does another rate cut or next year when they're expected to do another rate cut. But with credit cards, they're not really going down as fast. So you want to make sure you pay off those credit cards as soon as you can, because the Fed rate cut isn't speeding up the lowering of interest rates for those credit cards. Also keep in mind that savings rates are going down because of the rate cut. So if you have a lot of money in your savings, you should most definitely invest it in the stock market. Although there could be a recession, which means the stock market could go down. But what we don't want to do is try to time the market and hold our money into savings while we're missing out on the current market gains, expecting that, you know, we can jump in at the perfect time and, you know, invest at the bottom of the market. Not many people are able to do that. And even big time investors, billionaires like Warren Buffett recommend just staying consistent and putting money in the market on a consistent, regular weekly or bi-weekly or monthly basis instead of trying to time the market. Because when you try to time the market, you miss out on the gains waiting until the stock drops. And if you've been looking at stocks over the past 10 years, there have been people expecting some type of drop ever since three years ago. And the past three years have been really great as far as gains. And you would have missed out on it if you were waiting on the expected recession to come, which has gone on longer than most people expected. All right, so thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking this time out of your day. Again, if you're not a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the like button because you really like this video. And also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. All right, thanks for watching, you guys. Have a great day.